Valentine's Day is approaching. Usually, the second busiest holiday for restaurants will look a little different this year. With limited indoor seating, some couples might just get a box of chocolates and call it a day. But did you know that those chocolates are probably made with child slaves or in violation of fair trade initiatives? I know a very small minority of you may be thinking, no, the chocolates that I buy have a fair trade label on them. Well, that may not mean what you think it means. Let's look at what qualifies as fair trade chocolate. While criteria for fair trade certification differs, the following are pretty standard. So one, produced with no child labor. Two, environmental sustainability. Three, strict labor standards. And four, various labor standards to ensure democratic participation in small producer co-ops and unionized plantations. So it sounds simple, but many of the big names can't even adhere to these most basic of guidelines. In the United States, products which have as little as 11% fair trade produced cocoa can be labeled as fair trade chocolate. In addition, if other ingredients besides cocoa are fair trade, the amount of fair trade cocoa may be even less. So a company claiming ethical production doesn't necessarily mean that its supply chain is completely free of injustice. The two largest contributors of chocolate in the world are Ghana and the Ivory Coast, and their farmers make as little as $2 per day. This translates to about 3.2% of the price of the final chocolate bar. So middlemen take advantage of economically depressed farmers by purchasing cocoa for under market value or convincing the farmers that the tonnage being sold is less than what the farmer had calculated. So although market price of cocoa fluctuates, fair trade certification has created a minimum price per ton to pay to the farmers, which helps ensure a consistent minimum wage to these farmers. This leads to financial stability for them, leading to better quality of life for the farmers and for their families. Even today, where farmers are paid so little, the women working on the cocoa farms are paid even less, if at all. Women in the Ivory Coast constitute 70% of the cocoa labor, but only 20% of the income and only 25% of the owned land. And children are often pawns in this cocoa game as well. Abdul, he survived three years of work. He's just 10. He earns no wages for his work, he says. Just food, the occasional tip from the owner, and the torn clothes on his back. Put in the simplest of terms, Abdul is a child slave. So kids are either wielding machetes in fields, being trafficked throughout Africa to act as housekeepers, or much worse. Fair trade ensures that all farmers, regardless of gender, are afforded equal compensation for their crops and that the vulnerable are not taken advantage of. Simple. In February 2020, just last year, a document from the World Cocoa Foundation was leaked, and in it were talking points regarding how to respond to the leaked report about child and slave labor in the industry. Shameful that they're more concerned about covering themselves than actually, you know, doing something about it. The Harkin Angle Protocol, which was enacted in 2001, was put into place to eradicate child labor from the chocolate industry. The catch? The deal kept federal regulators from policing the chocolate supply. When asked in spring 2019, representatives of some of the biggest and best known brands, Hershey's, Mars, and Nestle, couldn't guarantee that any of their chocolates were produced without child labor. The issue is that these big companies have no clue where their cocoa even comes from. Mars can only trace 24% of its cocoa back to farms. Looking at you, m &Ms. Hershey's can trace less than half. Rhesus, anything to say about that? And Nestle can trace 49% of its cocoa supply to farms, so crunch bars, yikes. <laughs> Even more notably, Mandela's, which is the owner of Cadbury, and Godiva didn't even bother signing into the initiative to eradicate child labor. So, if the big guys don't care enough about the little guys, how do we, as the consumers, do our part? Research your companies to see if they just have a fair trade label slapped on there or if they can actually certify their product. Fair Trade Foundation website is a great starting point to do this. Tony's Chocolate Only, for example, is a Dutch company, and they pay a 40% premium to their farmers to ensure a fair price. So Paul Shannon Makers, one of the executives, put it simply, nobody needs chocolate. It's a gift to yourself or someone else, and we think it's absolute madness that for a gift no one really needs, so many people suffer. So in response to these words, the World Cocoa Foundation spokesman said that Tony's Chocolate Only sources 7,000 tons of cocoa, which is a tiny amount. How scalable is that approach? Look, there are companies out there trying to do the right thing by paying farmers fairly and ensuring that kids are not harvesting their cocoa. Try to buy from them rather than the mega organizations only looking to sweeten their bottom line. And that's our mini musings of the week.